even said, if you don't believe me, just check out the manifestations. He even talked about manifestations as the legitimacy of the supernatural. In fact, he said this, uh, he alluded to this several times. He said uh, the supernatural, check out the results. Check out the manifestations. You'll see that you see results here that you never saw before, or that you never saw anywhere else. So even Jesus uh, utilized manifestations to prove the legitimacy of the supernatural. And that's really the question. Everybody wants to know, does it work? You know, y'all teaching us to live by faith. You're teaching us to sow and give. You're teaching us how to pray. You're teaching us to believe. You're teaching us to confess. You know, we're confessing all this stuff, and the question is, does it work? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't act like you ain't ever asked the question because I know that you have. Yeah. Amen. Because I've asked it. I asked the Father many times, does it work? Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that it works. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, how, how the supernatural Manifest, and, and really though, that, it, that really is a legitimate question. Anyone that asks you to come into a discipline, they should be able to tell you if it works. Just like I was, uh, when I was in college, um, I used to ask, well, what, what, so what, 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 what am I going to get from this? You know, they said, well, first of all, you're going to get a bill. <laughs> and then you're going to get a piece of paper. And then you're going to get no guarantee of a job. I'm like, wow, I don't know if I want to do this or not. God. I literally, listen, I literally stopped going to school to study a discipline to go to study what I wanted to learn. I literally stopped going to school to get a degree and said, I'm going to just study. I want to, I want to learn the Bible, so I'm going to just go to school to learn the Bible just because I want to know it. I ain't, going just, I ain't going to just try to get no piece of paper. I want to learn how to, how to read that Bible, interpret that Bible the right way because I realized that discipline wasn't going to give me nothing I was looking for. And so everybody, it's a legitimate question. Does it work? Is it going to really change my life? And it's okay if you've, if you've asked that question. You ought to. Amen. Glory to God. But I'm here to tell you today, it, it, it works, but you have to know how to work it in order for it to work for you. Amen. Glory to God. I can show you all kind of historical, biblical, and contemporary uh, examples and uh, testimonies of people who've had the supernatural manifest in their life, but that doesn't do you any good because you have to work the laws yourself. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And so while you're here is you're in school. Amen. You're in school to learn how to work the supernatural until you make it work for you. Amen. amen. Glory to God. I got about three of y'all that agree with that. If that's not why you're here, you're in the wrong place. Amen. It's like showing up at the doctor for a hamburger. Amen. Glory to God. What you here for? A hamburger. No, you're in the wrong place. That place is down the road. It's got a drive through If you go to the doctor, you're there for a particular reason. So if you're here, you're here to learn how to work the supernatural until it works for you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we testify and we share with you the things that work for us, but it's not to brag. It's just to show you that it works so that you can have a contemporary example. There's nothing better than a contemporary example of how something works for you to be able to say, wow, it's not just biblical. It's not just old in time. It worked today. Amen. In our generation, in our structure, the supernatural works today. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, so we're going to talk a little bit about how it works. How the supernatural manifests is a genius design by the Father. He has given us a mechanism to effectively communicate with, to communicate with and navigate the supernatural world. And that mechanism is called the language of the heart. Everybody say the language of the heart. I'm going to talk to you all for a few minutes about the language of the heart. That's what we're here to talk about. Look, in Proverbs chapter number 4, verse number 23, put that on the screen. Let's read this together. Proverbs 4, 23, this is what it says. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, that word issue, that word issue means source. It means source. So what it's really saying is keep your heart because your heart is the source of life. This means that your life is as what's flowing out of your heart. It means that life flows out of the heart. It does not come from any other source. So whatever level, whatever life that you currently have, that life came out of your heart. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There is no other place for life to come from but our hearts. Now, the Amplified says to guard it above all that you guard. Uh, and there's a reason for, the, for this commandment. So he places the heart as the highest priority for everyone. He says, whatever you do, guard your heart above everything that you guard. So if you guard your money, 
guard your heart more. If you guard your eyes, your hands, your, what, your, 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 your possessions, whatever you guard, he says, guard your heart more. And there's a reason why he puts the heart at the top of the priority list because the heart is where your life comes from. Everything about your life is going to come out of your heart. Say amen, somebody. All right, now, so we often talk about faith, but let's break it down. I'm going to break faith down a little bit further so that you can see uh, how faith relates to the heart. Now, faith is simply a heart conditioned to function, live, and conduct its affairs based on the perfected end of the spectrum of possibilities and the spectrum of existence. Faith is simply a heart that is conditioned to function, to live, and to conduct its affairs based on the perfected end of the spectrum of possibilities and the spectrum of existence. So faith, then, is a conditioned heart. It's a heart that's been conditioned. It's been developed to stay on one side of the spectrum and never visit the other side. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what a heart, that's what faith really is. And faith abides in the heart. The heart, here's why. Now, this is why this is so important. The heart communicates to the supernatural realm exactly like your eyes, ears, and mouth communicate in the natural realm. See, we're, what am I teaching you? I'm going to teach you um, the supernatural. How does it work? You need to know how it works. Now, just like you have uh, digits and faculties that contact the natural realm and give you understanding of how the natural realm, you got fingertips and then you can feel textures because he wants you to be able to understand how the natural world works, what, what's going on in, in your world. Now, just like you, he's given us all of these things for the natural world, he's given us also uh, something to be able to contact and understand and relate to the spiritual world. And that's called your heart. And in your heart abides faith. And so faith is a conditioned heart. Your heart can get conditioned to where it only receives, accepts, believes, talks about the perfected. Amen. Your heart can be conditioned. Matter of fact, he gave it to you for that purpose. Amen. I'm going to prove that to you today. Now, so the heart communicates to the supernatural realm exactly like uh, our physical parts. Let me give you a scripture. We'll read some scriptures together just so I can give you some examples of what this talks about. Look at Genesis chapter 24. We'll look at verse 43 through 45. Now, what did I say? Faith is a heart that's conditioned because the, your heart communicates it, it communicates. It sends out messages. It sends out signals to the supernatural realm, and the supernatural realm responds to your heart. Watch this. Let's read this together. Ready, read. Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman to whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master. Now, stop for it. Now, here's what happened. So, now, he said, this is the guy that Abraham sent to get Isaac a wife. He said, now, when I go to the well, let me say this. Let me see a woman coming. Let me say this to her. Let me say this to her. And let her say this, 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 and this. Now, that's what, that's what you've read so far, right? Look at the first words uh, in verse 45. And before I had done speaking in my heart, and before I had done speaking in my heart, he never verbally said any of this. He said this in his heart. And look what happened. Behold, Rebecca came forth. That's the same thing that's getting ready to happen to you. Because what you say in your heart is coming forth. Your heart is talking to the supernatural more than your mouth is. Come on, y'all. Talk to me now. What's in your heart draws and pulls out of the supernatural realm what's really in your heart. So a lot of times, it even, it communicates to the supernatural louder than your mouth does. That's why he said, 
before you start speaking out of your mouth, make sure that you believe in your heart. Because your heart is the one that's really doing the talking, and your heart is what the supernatural is really listening to. The supernatural is listening to your heart more than what you're saying out of your mouth. So make sure they match. He said, before I got done saying this in my heart, you know, you might not understand this, but you say stuff in your heart all the time. Your heart is always talking. Even when your mouth is not running, your heart is talking. Glory to God. Let me give you an example, since y'all act like y'all don't understand what I'm saying. When your spouse is talking to you, and you're not listening to them, and you are trying to figure out what you're going to say back, you're doing that in your heart. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> that, that, that struck a chord. I think some of y'all can relate to that. When you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you doze off and you go off in the other direction, your heart already uh, conjuring up some things to say, you're doing that in your heart. Your heart is, al <laughs> your heart is always, always talking. And I want you to know that the supernatural realm is picking up on everything that your heart is saying. That's why David said, let the words of my mouth and the meta let, let this be acceptable in thy sight. Because he, he can, the supernatural can hear what your heart is saying. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He can hear what you're saying. Now, this man, he was saying this in his heart. He said, before I got done speaking this in my heart, Rebecca showed up, and she did exactly what he said, and guess what? His heart brought it forth. Y'all got to hear me now. Watch this. Watch this. He didn't know what she was going to say. He didn't know what the woman was going to say when he met her. He told the supernatural to let her say what he wanted them to say. He said, let her say this, and let her say that, so that way I know it's you doing this supernatural. I know it's you bringing forth the wife for my master's son and this ain't no strange person coming up trying to, trying to trick me. He said, so that I know that it's the right one and that it's you moving this whole situation, let her say what I'm saying she should say. So he told her what to say in his heart, in the supernatural. Just like you can tell your boss what to say the next time you ask for a raise. Oh my, 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 glory to God. See? See, you can see your heart, your heart can get fixed. Your heart can get fixed before you even go in to talk to the boss. And you can say, tell him that this is what he's going to say. Glory to God. They're going to say, no, we're not going to give you a 50 cent raise. We're going to give you a 75 cent raise. Yes. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you can put that out there in the environment before you even get in there. Because your heart is the mechanism that the Father gave you to communicate with the supernatural realm. And it communicates with the supernatural all the time. That's why the Bible says, whatever you do, guard your heart. That's why the Bible said, whatever you do, guard your heart. Guard it above everything. Why? Because what's coming out of your heart, you're going to see it show up in your life. Hallelujah. Even more so than what you're saying out of your mouth. All right. Now, watch this. So, now the heart, the heart has to be prepared. The heart must be prepared. Say this out of your mouth. The heart must be prepared. Now say this, my heart must be prepared. Now, this excludes no one so that you don't think you're exempt from this. Every person that exists, your heart has to be prepared to really operate in faith and get the supernatural to do what you want it to do. The heart has to be prepared. We don't come into the kingdom with our hearts prepared to work the supernatural. Matter of fact, Sometimes it takes us years to even get to the point where we believe that the stuff in our heart is really controlling our environment. Amen. It takes teaching and building and layer upon layer, concept upon concept, precept upon precept, faith upon faith. It takes a while to get to the point where you understand, I got to watch what I got in my heart because what I got in my heart is what produced the life that I had. And so you need to understand that just because you've been in church for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, it does not mean that your heart is prepared. This is, a, this is a process that you have to do on purpose. Everybody say on purpose. Now look at this. Look at 1 Chronicles chapter number 29. Glory to God. Let me know when you see it. 1 Chronicles 29, 18. All right, let's read this together. Ready, read. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers. Listen to this. Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people, and prepare their hearts unto you. He's praying for Israel. He's saying, let your people, let your people 
keep this in the imagination of the thoughts in their hearts and prepare their hearts unto you. That's a good prayer to pray. Amen. You should pray that over yourself sometime. Amen. Glory to God. Just pray it. Yeah, prepare my heart unto you. Get my heart set so it's just for you. Amen. Get my heart set so I can hang out with you. Amen. Get my heart set so I don't agree with nothing that you don't say. Amen. Get my heart prepared so that I'm ready to bring forth only what I want out of the supernatural. Amen. So the heart has to be prepared. Amen. Now, watch this. When he says prepare their hearts unto you, this means I'm getting my heart conditioned to only carry and live out of the end of the spectrum that he paid for and that he produced. Amen. Now, the father has already paid, some, paid for some stuff for you. Everything on the perfected end is already done. It's paid for. It's already yours. Amen. So if you're going to get your heart prepared for him, he's saying get your heart conditioned only to live and carry the things on that end of the spectrum that he paid for and produced because he wants you to have it. Amen. That means that you can get your heart prepared only to carry and to live out of what he say about you. But, you, but your heart has to be prepared. Amen. Now watch this. Even Abraham, even Abraham had to go through this preparation process. He had to go through the preparation process just like you do. Say, Abraham, Amen. had to do it. Had to do I, it. Have to do it I have to do it too. Listen to what Genesis 17, 17 said. Watch this. Let me see when you see it. Genesis 17, 17. Look what it says. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his, where did he say that? Now remember, no words are coming out of his mouth, but the Holy Spirit and the spirit and the spirit realm hears everything that he's saying. It said, Abraham said, What? In his heart? Shall I, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? So look what he was saying in his heart. He was saying this in his heart. He fell on the floor and laughed. He wouldn't verbalize it, but he was saying it in his heart. And the supernatural picked up on him. So even Abraham's heart wasn't prepared for everything that the supernatural had prepared for him. He said, you're going to have a child at 100 years old. Abraham, his heart wasn't prepared to carry that. Can you see this? So just like his heart ain't prepared for everything, I can understand how sometimes you hear things in your mind go, womp, womp, nope, womp, that don't compute. Why? You, you're not used to it. I understand that. It's all right. We're going to get you ready. So that whatever the Lord say to you like Mary, your heart will be prepared. He told her, you're going to have a child without a man. She said, so be it. Let it be done unto me. Amen. Now, everybody know that's strange. How are you going to have a child without a man? But her heart was prepared to hear it. Amen. That's the only time. That's the only thing that happens to you sometimes. Your heart just hasn't been prepared to hear some of the stuff. Amen. And so the devil tried to fight your heart and fight some of the promises and fight some of the things. When we tell you, confess this confession, confess this confession, and you're going to begin to see manifestation, sometimes the devil fights you over that. Amen. But you're going to learn how to fight that devil right back. You're going to learn how to tell him, my heart is prepared to carry this. I'm going to carry this confession all the days of my life until everything on it manifests. Tell that devil I'm getting my heart ready. I'm getting my heart ready. I'm going to show you how to manifest out of the supernatural realm like never before. And who knows that you might be the best that ever lived. -wee. See, that's, see what I'm saying? I just said something to you. That sometimes your mind and your heart, you know, I said, you might be the best that ever lived. Everybody said, well, I'm, uh -huh. amen. <laughs> Glory to God. What you were supposed to say, be, be it done unto me. If I'm, so, I'm going to be the best, let it be done. Amen. Glory to God. Your heart, got to get, your heart got to get ready to hear anything the Father got to say. He might tell you he's going to do it by tomorrow. You can't stand here and wrestle with the fact that he can do it by tomorrow. The Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? Woo, glory to God. And since there is not, you got to be ready to hear it. Hallelujah. I said, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So Abraham, Abraham, he had to, he had to, he had to get his heart prepared. He had to get his heart prepared. And so do we. Don't, don't, don't despise the process. Don't despise the process. You might say to yourself, well, that's a lot. We got to do a lot. We got to do a lot. Well, you did a lot to get messed up. You, you didn't get messed up overnight. Huh? <laughs> your, thinking, your thinking didn't get corrupted overnight. Amen. Glory to God. So if it take you a year or two to get your heart ready and prepared to receive the word of God, so be it. As long as you get there. I said as long as you get there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Now, now, that's just like when we talk about praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. What David said, my heart is set. He said, my heart is fixed to praise the Lord. Even your heart even tell the supernatural when praise really going on. When you just standing around clapping just because they up singing and you, you singing and saying a few words just because they saying them, the supernatural say, I don't hear no praise. But you got words coming out of your mouth, but he don't hear no praise because your heart got to be fixed to praise the Lord. I bless his name at all times. His praise shall continually. Glory to God. I pray, I jump up out the bed praising. I don't need no music to praise him. I don't need no praise seem to praise him because praise is in my heart. Praise is a matter of the heart. Glory to God. And, you have, and, and when you've been through what I've been through, and when you've been through what you've been through, and when you learn how to trust him no matter what, I'm telling you, you have a genuine praise. And I don't care what the devil do, and I don't care what he say. You'll break out in a praise meeting right in his face. You'll tell that devil, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise is a matter of the heart. I must have read Two to three hundred scriptures in preparation for this lesson. Of just about the heart. Two or three hundred scriptures just about the heart. And you will be surprised how many of the scriptures say that my heart shall praise him. Uh, praise comes, praise is a praise come out of your heart. So when you're standing in church, that's why men, men have a harder time in church than women do. Men are too analytical. They stand around trying to figure out why we're praising. Why I got the praising for? What's going on? What did somebody say? Who did what? What's going to happen tomorrow? When is, when is my thing going to come through? When my blessing coming? You thinking about all that? You're supposed to be praising the Lord because praise is a matter of the heart. You ain't got time to be trying to figure out all this deep stuff. You're supposed to be opening up your mouth, praising the Lord. Woo, glory to God. You're supposed to be sending out signals to the supernatural. I'm a worshiper. So the supernatural can start releasing the blessing of worshipers to you. Do you know that the, there's blessings strictly to worshipers? You ain't got time to be sitting around trying to figure nothing out. You ain't got time to be sitting around trying to be cool. You ain't got time to be sitting around trying to act like no man. Everybody know you're a man. We can look at you and tell you're a man. But I'm talking about what's in your heart. You ought to have a heart full of praise. Because the Lord brought you out of more than everybody else. You ain't got time for that. You, ain't, you don't have time for that. Glory to God. You don't want the supernatural looking at you saying, oh, they're not a worshiper. Everybody else praising. They standing there looking around doing this or doing that. No, no. I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm playing the drum, I'm, I'm going to praise him on the drum. If I'm playing the keyboard, I'm going to praise him on the keyboard. If I'm turning buttons, I'm going to praise him while I turn them. Woo, glory to God. He's done too much for me for me not to praise him. I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm ushering, I'm going to praise him while I usher. If I got to be quiet while I usher, I don't want to do it. Glory to God. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I said, I'm going to praise him. Just like some of y'all sitting there looking at me now. You looking, you looking, but you don't understand. You, you, God been too good to you. I, I say he been too good to you. And what you looking at me for? I didn't bring you out. Hey, it wasn't my blood that brought you. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. I ain't shed no blood for you. It was him. Hallelujah. You better get your heart fixed to praise. I say you better get your heart fixed to praise. You better get it fixed. If your heart is not locked into praising God all the time, the devil has you in a trap. Because the father want to hear you say thank you. He want to hear you say, Lord, I thank you. And I don't care what you've been, where you've been, and I don't care where you, what you've done, and I don't care who you've done it with. You still supposed to praise the Lord. Now, let me show you one effective, one very effective preparation method. So, you, look, you, your heart has to be prepared. Our hearts have to be prepared. We got to get them ready. We, we, we have to get them ready on purpose. There's some practical things that we have to do to get our hearts ready on purpose. Your heart don't come ready to hear stuff like you more than a conqueror. And, and really believe it and bring forth with it. It's, it's easy to hear it in your ear. But it's another thing for you to really receive it in your heart, put it into practice where you actually get something out of it in your everyday life. 
All right? So the heart has to be prepared. Here's one really effective preparation method. You have to understand the nature of scriptural language and why. So that when you read it or meditate it, you get the right results from it. The word of God, whether preached, taught, listening to it on CD, wherever you get it from, the word of God will not do you any good if you don't understand the fundamental nature of the language, why the language is the way that it is and why. So this is one way to get your heart prepared. I'm going to share with you um, how to understand the language, the nature of the language of the word. Now, listen to this. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. All things are possible to him that believe. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature altogether. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Now, now watch this. The scripture talks like that. It, 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 it communicates these kind of messages. And here's the reason why. The scriptures never talk about us from the old broke down end of the spectrum. <laughs> it's never going to tell you how defeated you are. It's going to say, my grace is sufficient for you. You can handle it. It's going to tell you you're more than a conqueror. It never taught, listen to me now, I'm trying to teach you something very important. When you read the Bible, you'll notice this. The scriptures never talk about us from the old broke down perspective, from the old broke down side of the spectrum. Now, even when it does, even when it does, it's only doing so to try to get us to focus on where we are on the spectrum now. If he said, prophet has read a scripture today, you were at one time in the world without God, without hope, strength, but he didn't leave it there. He said, but now. See, even when it talk about the whole broke down side, it's just to lead you right back over here because your heart is already prepared for all the garbage. He, the script is trying to get you ready for the other side. That's why it never talked to you from that end. It don't, you don't need no help with that. The nature of the scripture is to get your heart ready to carry the other end of the spectrum. That's why when you read the Bible from now on, you're going to notice the Bible is awesome, uh, awfully positive. It's awfully, you know, to the good side. Why does it never talk about the other side? Because it don't need to talk about the other side. Practically everything on the other end of the spectrum, you already experienced it. As a matter of fact, you've experienced it several times. And so you don't need no help understanding that. You know, hell and brokenness and all that kind of stuff. We learn how to be abased. Now it's time to learn how to abound. So them scriptures trying to lock you on one side of that spectrum and don't even look on the other side. Trying to tell you don't even look down there. Glory to God. Amen. Keep your eyes down here. That's why the Bible said keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Why? So if you're looking at Jesus, you ain't looking at the devil. You ain't looking at sickness. You ain't looking at disease. You're not looking at nothing but the perfected end of your spectrum. Now, now, so, so th this strategy of keeping all the scriptures talking, the nature of the scriptures talking in a certain vein. This strategy is on purpose to overdose our hearts. He's trying to give you a heart overdose. He's trying to overdose you with nothing but the life end of the spectrum. Our hearts were so saturated with the death end of the spectrum for so long that it takes a concentrated effort to undo those effects. I'm going to give you an exercise for retaining the rain, and it's designed to let you see how, how much and how steeped in that side of the spectrum we were. Just to give you a revelation so you understand, I'm leaving that side for good, and I'm never even visiting it. All things work together for good. Watch this. Why is that scripture in the Bible? See, this is what you got to understand. You can't just quote that scripture. All things work together good for them that love God, called according to his purpose. It's good to re memorize it, and it's good to quote it. But why is it in there? Because he don't even want you to think that even when bad stuff happens, it's winning over you. 
He wants you to even look at something bad and say, all things work together for my good. What is he doing? Trying to trap you on the other end. Because if you don't say all things work together for the good, you will focus on what's happening. Won't you? And what's that going to do? Place you back where? On the other end of the spectrum. And every thought, every time you get stuck on this end, you are, te- you are telling your future, I want more of this. But I don't know about you. I'm done with this. I'm not sending nothing out there from now on except what I want. And all I want is on the other side of the spectrum. There ain't nothing over here that I'm after. Y'all sitting there looking at me like, y'all, just don't, y'all don't relate to this. Uh, I, maybe I'm just speaking for me and my family. I, I'm not interested in nothing on the other end. I'm only interested in the life side of the spectrum. That's why he said, even if something happened, say, you know, everything going to work together for my good. Because if you start thinking like that, that's what you're going to bring forth. Just imagine from now on, anything negative that happened in your life, your heart sends out a signal, tells the supernatural to fix it and make it work for your good. Mm, 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 mm. I think that was good right there. I think you ought to imagine that in your mind. Your heart sent out a signal, all things work together for my good. Fix this and make it work for my good. Make a blessing come out of this. That's what happened with Joseph. Joseph told his brothers, what you did, you meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my good. That's the same thing that's happening to me. I don't care what you try. It's going to work out for my good. Yeah, glory to God. You try to curse me, I'm going to get a blessing out of it. Y'all better try to open up your mouth and say something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You gotta, so you got to think about, why, why does the Bible use, say these kind of things? It's just random. You're more than a conqueror. It's just random. Here you are. You've been walking around in your life. Just doing what you do all your life. All of a sudden, you get into this discipline. You start hearing stuff like, you're more than a conqueror. You never thought about yourself as a conqueror or not or along those lines at all till you got here. Why? Because your heart wasn't fixed to carry them kind of thoughts about yourself. But now, you have to carry them. Because if you're going to be a supernatural giant killer, you got to understand, if that giant jump up, he's going to get beat down. Today, he's going to get his head cut off. Glory to God. If he jump up today, he in trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you have to understand you're a conqueror now. And you have to see yourself as a conqueror only. So that when it's time to go in to possess, nothing else comes out of your mouth. And I'm here, your grasshopper language is over. You will never call yourself a grasshopper again. Because you are more than a conqueror. I said you are more than a conqueror. And that's all you are. I said, and that's all you are. Glory to God. All I do is win. Hey. Anthony Brown said, when you look up, you're going to see me winning. Every time you look up, you're going to see me winning. Every time you look up, you're going to. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the end of the spectrum that I live on. I don't live on the losing side. I went on, I live on the winning side. Why do you handle yourself this way? Because you're a son of God. Now, didn't prophet say it? She taught her lesson today. She said, we sons of God, children of God, heirs of God. You, you are going to win every time. And you need to have that perspective about yourself. I will never lose again in my life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you can't care who don't like it. I live on this end of the spectrum and I'm not, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to dummy down my shine just because it put a glare in your eye. If you can't see because of my shine, go blind. I, I ain't. I'm not going to dummy down my shine just because you can't see. Hey, glory to God. I'm going to shout by myself. I'm going to shout by myself. I intend to shine. I intend to shine. I intend to shine. Glory to God. I intend to shine all of my days. Glory to God. I'm staying on this end of the spectrum. I had enough of that when I was in it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Woo. I got to move. I'm almost out of time. Woo-wee. I 
I don't see no losers. I see winners. I don't see no losers. I see winners. I'm looking at a house full of winners. Hey, glory to God. Bless his name. I'm looking at a house full of winners. I declare in Jesus' name. From this day forth, you're going to bring forth nothing but the life side of the spectrum. All the days of your life. Hey, glory to God. I said glory to God. Listen to this. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says. I want you to see this. Get that. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. We're going to read this together. Let me know when you see it. All right, watch this. It says, casting down imaginations. Everybody say that's a hard thing. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Say that's a, that's a hard thing. You can only do this in your heart. Look what it says. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Christ side of the spectrum. That means if it ain't on this side, I, I'm bringing it into obedience. I'm going to make everything line up with what this says about me. Hey, glory to God. I'm only speaking what this side says about me. Every thought. Now, why does it say every thought? Why? Here's the reason why. This means don't let the death side of the spectrum have any airtime in your mind. They have, um, well, you know, when you go and try to get on TV, you know, they sell you airtime. Airtime is very expensive. But there's no more expensive airtime than your mind, your heart, which your mind is a part of your heart. Your heart has airtime that the devil is constantly trying to buy time on your network. You need to tell that devil my network is closed. Glory to God. It's only open to one side of the spectrum. That means you can't buy no airtime in my heart. Not no more. Not no more. Watch this. I'm not even letting you have one thought. He said you bring every thought into captivity. Do you understand how important he's saying your heart is? He's saying your heart is so important and the issues of life, your life flow out of your heart so much, don't give the devil one thought. Don't even let him have one. Every thought that he's sent your way, you reject it and send it back to him. Why? Because you, if you don't want to keep bringing forth what you were bringing forth when you was giving him airtime, he said, don't give him no more. Amen. Now, that's how bad you are. Amen. You can shut the devil down altogether. Woo. You can shut him down and say, you, don't got, you get no more, no more airtime in my mind. Every thought that you bring to me, I'm sending it back to you. Reject it. He wouldn't say that if you couldn't do it. Uh-uh. I said he, he wouldn't say it if you couldn't do it. And so that end of the spectrum says that you are the master controller of your heart. And that you, if any thought gets in your heart, you have to let it in. This means don't let the death side of the spectrum have any air time in your mind, in your heart. None. He wants us to be extreme in this preparation of our hearts. Because imagine how powerful you become when all we ever bring forth is the life end of the spectrum. Imagine how powerful you will be when you learn and prepare your heart to only carry what he says about you. Glory to God. When you eat, sleep, and drink what he says about you, when you rehearse it and meditate it, when you stand in the mirror and declare to yourself, I am a child of the most high God. I am more than a conqueror. All things are possible for me because I'm a believer. Do you know how powerful you're going to become? How powerful you're going to become. When you, I'm working on this now. We have, you have to work on this. You have to get your help because you, you have no idea how many thoughts come across your mind a day. Your heart is a constant flow, a network of thoughts. 
one after the other, coming from all kinds of sources. But man, you ought to be able to imagine now how powerful you're going to be when you've, when you've exercised your discipline, exercised yourself to catch those thoughts Amen. and say, where did this come from? I, I don't remember this down on the end of the spectrum where I live now. Amen. This must come from another source. Yeah. Send, that one back, send that back to the sender. Yeah. Glory to God. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This is this the devil's thought. Yeah. Just imagine how powerful, how powerful you're going to live. Imagine some of the things you're going to bring forth. I read in the scripture where it said, he said, they had a double heart, double heart. This means, imagine if your heart is filled with half and half. That's the knowledge of good and evil. How are you going to bring forth something when the stuff in your container, in your heart is canceling each other out? You got the same amount of good coming out of your mouth as you do negative. Well, them two things cancel each other out. You can't bring nothing forth. I declare in Jesus' name, from this day forward, you're not going to have no double heart. Your heart going to be set aside for God and him only. Your heart is set aside for this end of the spectrum and this end only. I said he wants us to be extreme. In the preparation of the heart. Because think about how powerful you're getting ready to be. I'm telling you now, you might not know this. I can see this in the spirit. The devil, the demons, they're already trembling. They ner they nervous right now. Because you just canceled their assignment. Whenever they don't have airtime, whenever they can't get an audience with you, you take all their power away. All of the devil's warfare is thought warfare, and he has to get in your heart before he can do anything to you. You just shut down his whole operation. He already nervous that he ain't going to be able to stop you from bringing forth your riches. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I wish y'all would say something about that. I say he already nervous about the fact that he cannot shut down. And I, this is my last comment. It's your time. And it is your turn to live on this end only. And I declare in Jesus' name. For the rest of my days, this is where I'm living. For the, you better open up your mouth. For the rest of my days, this is where I'm living. In Jesus' name. Give him a praise. I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.